Move to listed questions to the Minister for Regional Development. And this is, I think, the Minister's first period in question time. We welcome you to that. Can I inform the House that question number 12 has been withdrawn? Sorry, question number one and question number 12 have been withdrawn. Well, Mr. Sammy Douglas. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Question number two, please. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, I am fully committed to the delivery of Belfast Rapid Transit, including not only the current phase which connects East Belfast, West Belfast and Titanic Quarter via the city centre, but also further future extensions to the north and south of the city. I regard Belfast Rapid Transit as a transformational public transport project for the city. It represents a great opportunity for Belfast going forward and is a major decision for my department in relation to the commitment of funding in support of an executive priority. I have a keen personal interest in Belfast Rapid Transit and have recently visited some of the infrastructure which my department is currently developing for the system, including the new 520 space park and ride facility at Dundonald and the ongoing works on the routes. The works have been well publicised and details of the impacts on local traffic are available on my department's tra Traffic Watch Northern Ireland um, mm. website. The changes which these works will introduce and which have already been introduced on completed section of the routes will provide benefits for existing public transport in advance of Belfast Rapid Transit becoming operational. The procurement of the Rapid Transit vehicles is progressing well and I hope to make a major announcement on this in the next few weeks. Phase one of the Belfast Rapid Transit system is scheduled to become operational in September 2018. Well, Mr. Douglas, for a supplementary. Um, could I thank the Minister for her answer so far, and I wish her the, all the best in the rest of her question today. Um, um, would the Minister agree with me that, in terms of East Belfast, we should be encouraging commuters to be using the Cumber Greenway as an additional route to the Rapid Transport Scheme? And could the Minister um, maybe outline any plans that she would have to improve, improve and enhance the Cumber Greenway? Thank the, the member for his best wishes um, for today, anyway, and um, for his question. And I, I do agree with the member in relation to the Cumber, Cumber Greenway. Um, some may say that I am I'm slightly biased, um, given that it, it links both of our constituencies. But I do believe that it is one of the best examples of greenway infrastructure in Northern Ireland. I'm very keen to explore how it can be improved to encourage greater use for commuting and indeed for wider um, reasons, including health and well-being. My department is working on a scheme to improve the linkages to Belfast city centre, but I also want to see better access to the greenway provided at the Cumber end, particularly linking into Cumber Town itself uh, and eventually into Newton Ours. I believe that this would allow for greater numbers of people to enjoy safe cycling and walking route for, and this be for both commuters and, and leisure users. Um, if government departments and councils work together, we have an opportunity, I believe, to develop Cumber Greenway into a world-class facility. Mr. Mr. Speaker, and thanks uh, the Minister for answers so far. You mentioned that there has been progress on procurement, but can I ask the Minister, are, are you confident that the revised deadline of 2017 uh, will be met for the vehicles to arrive uh, fully assembled, or uh, is there potential for that new deadline to, to slip? I thank the member for her question, and I understand that it is in, um, that, that is no longer an issue and that they should be in place. Um, the procurement process um, commenced in September 2014, and tenders were returned on the 1st of May this year, um, and those have been assessed, and as I said, the, there will be an announcement in the next few weeks. Um, that was obviously part of the, the PAR review, and uh, we're confident that it's on track to, um, to be delivered on time. Well, Mr. David McElveen. Question number three, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. The member will be pleased to know that TransLink has commenced work towards the construction of a park and ride facility at Kalibaki Railway Station. A detailed design review and risk assessment, including a CCTV survey of the interaction of vehicles and pedestrians, 
at the existing crossing has raised concern that additional traffic um, introduced um, by the park and ride facility could potentially cause blocking over the automatic crossing. This assessment, combined with increased crossing incidents, has led TransLink to conclude that the level crossing at Cullibaki Station should be upgraded before the park and ride project is commissioned. The crossing upgrade involves significant railway signalling alteration works. Timescales for this work depend on the certainty of capital funding and also availability of signalling expertise currently engaged on a number of significant railway projects, most notably phase two of the Coleraine to Londonderry track uh, relay project. Translink has committed to aim for completion of both the level crossing upgrade and the park and ride facility in 2018-19. And it's anticipated that the land purchase will be completed in the current financial year 2015-16 once site surveys have been concluded. For supplementary. Thank you Mr Principal Deputy Speaker and uh, I would like to welcome the Minister to the box today and also thank her for her answers so far. Uh, the Minister I'm sure will be aware having spoken to some local representatives in the area that we do have an issue in, in the area where the park and ride facility at Balamina has been put under immense pressure because there's actually very little alternative uh, for people to go given uh, the current situation with Cullibaki. Um, now that we finally do have a Minister for Regional Development who knows where North Antrim is, um, I wonder could I encourage the Minister to come and visit the constituency in the near future uh, so that she can see uh, for herself the, the pressing urgency upon this project? I thank the Minister for, for his comments and I'm happy to, to visit the constituency yet again. Um, but just in relation to the, the issue which he raised with um, the Ballymena Park, um, undoubtedly um, the proposed park and ride at Cullibaki would, um, would relieve the pressure on that facility, um, certainly in the short to medium term, um, particularly from, for those commuters travelling from north of Ballymena. Um, Ballymena Park has 294 spaces and it's consistently at full capacity and on occasion it accommodates a number of vehicles well into excess of the designated number of parking bays on that site. Um, I am aware of um, traffic problems as our, our TransLink um, in relation to um, commuters parking for long periods of time outside local residents, um, but um, hopefully in, in, the, in, the, in the maybe in the not so near future, but certainly within the next um, couple of years, that should be relieved. Mr. Jim Mollister. I could I express my dismay at the minister's answer? It's two years since it was announced. Headlines in the local paper about a park and ride facility at Cullibaki. March of this year, the department announced, in fact, they were going to provide 110 spaces. Now the minister comes to the house today and tells us they haven't even completed, completed the land purchase, that they now must revisit the level crossing, and it's going to be another three years before this basic provision is, is provided. Why is Cullibaki forgotten? And why has it also been forgotten in relation to its bypass? If we, now have, if we now have a minister who knows where North Antrim is. Wow. Um, I'm not sure whether I should really thank the minister for or the, the, the member for that question, but certainly he has an opinion in regard to that, and, and he will understand that I'm very recently into post, um, a post which was, was obviously held by, by another member, indeed another party in, in this chamber. Um, it has been drawn to my attention. I, I have asked for for an update. I'm asking for this to be progressed and obviously we're working through the, the processes of that. Well, Ms. Good to thank the Minister and welcome the Minister to your first question time. Um, could the Minister maybe on a similar vein give an update then on the development of the park and chair or park and ride sites at Dungiven and Clody? Very well, good. Um, just in, in relation to Dungiven, um, the department has actually invested in provision of a number of park and ride um, and share sites in the northwestern key transport corridor, including Drumahoe, Castle Dawson, um, Craigadick, Toome, Dunsilly and Ballymartin, which is up to 1,400 um, uh, spaces. In addition, um, there is a further park and ride facility um, proposing providing 60 spaces as part of the A6 Dungiven bypass scheme, and I hope that 
response to the minister's or the, the member's um, question. But if there's not something specific that I've missed on that, I'll, I'll certainly come back to her. I do remind the members that this was a question which was specific to the constituency of and in around Cully Back in particular. I call Mr John Dallet. Deputy Speaker, I'll do my best not to meander beyond Kulibaki and to thank the Minister for her continued interest in the Belfast Dairy Railway and congratulate her indeed on taking that epic journey from Belfast to Bell Arena recently to see the new passing loop. That was brilliant. Yes, the Kulibaki Park and Ride is essential, but can the Minister assure me that there are no discussions currently taking place about the future of the Knockmore line, which is currently mothballed, because I heard a rather nasty rumour at the weekend that they were considering making it yet another greenway. Can the Minister dispel that? For the I remind the member that this was a question specific to the Cullybacky Park and Ride. Sorry about that. To answer. Um, well, I, th I thank, I thank the, the member um, for, for his question and indeed I, I had a very enjoyable journey um, to, to Bell Arena to see the site there and very encouraged by the works which are progressing and the impact that that will obviously have um, for commuters um, making the, the journey from Londonderry um, in, into Belfast and further. Um, just in relation to not more, I, I'm not aware of the detail of that and obviously as the member has said that this is a rumour which he's heard over the weekend but I, I'm happy to um, look into that and come back to him. Call Mr Daphne Mackay. Okay, so very hard question number four. Northern Ireland Changing Gear, a bicycle strategy for Northern Ireland is based around a three pillar approach those three pillars are building a comp comprehensive network for the bicycle, supporting people who choose to travel by bicycle, and promoting the bicycle as a mode of transport for everyday journeys. This balanced approach underlines the importance of high quality bicycle infrastructure, good support measures for those who want to use a bicycle, and effective programs for behavioral change. I'm particularly keen to explore opportunities to expand cycling infrastructure in terms of building better infrastructure for the bicycle so that people can have the freedom and confidence to travel by bicycle for everyday journeys. Uh, current work has focused on urban bicycle infrastructure and the potential to develop greenways. Both are key elements of the bicycle strategy and fit in with the main purpose of Eurovelo, um, to provide routes that people can use both to make daily journeys and also for recreation. My department has had discussions with Sustrans in relation to the route for Eurovelo 1 within Northern Ireland. Uh, these discussions have included consideration of how Eurovelo might form part of the comprehensive network referred to in the bicycle strategy. Mackay for supplementary. I get a previous kind of can I congratulate the, the, the minister on her on her appointment um, can I ask the minister uh, what plans she does have to develop the Eurovelo to include uh, the north coast perhaps like and then to two potential greenways there from Bala Mina uh, through to Cushendall and also the Armoy greenway from Bala Mone to Bala Castle um, thank the member for, for his question. Obviously, this is something which is ongoing and is part of a route which is currently being developed, as is the funding associated with that. Um, again, funding is, is critical to these projects moving forward and also the availability of, of land acquisition as well. Um, and I'm not actually clear at this stage whether anything further would be required within those particular areas, um, but happy for officials to look at that um, as, as we move forward through this project. But I think this is an exciting um, option to be looking at uh, and certainly something which will develop um, cycling within Northern Ireland. Well, Mr. Gordon Lyons. Uh, thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. And well, this is my first question time uh, as well at DRD. However, I welcome uh, the Minister uh, as well and wish her well uh, in her post. Uh, the new uh, Queen's uh, Belfast uh, bike station uh, will be welcomed by, by, by many members, uh, I'm sure, uh, but perhaps the uh, Minister could give us a general assessment uh, of the scheme uh, to date, whether or not there will be other stations uh, that will be opened and whether this scheme um, could be extended to other towns in Northern Ireland. 
thank the, the member for his question. Um, Belfast Bikes has probably been one of the most successful bike share schemes that has been introduced in the United Kingdom. And the number of hires is now well above 100,000 um, since its launch in April this year. It is a Belfast City Council scheme, although my department provided capital funding of over £1 million for its implementation through the Active Travel Demonstration Projects competition. Last week, the, the Council announced an expansion of that scheme with two new docking stations at Queen's University. And I do know that the Council is giving consideration for additional sites. Now, obviously, the, the rationale behind the, minister, the member's question was um, whether this could be extended to his own constituency. But um, if, if other councils do wish to consider operating a bike share scheme, I would suggest that they do develop a business case uh, as Belfast um, City Council has done. Uh, and, and hopefully we will see the scheme then being launched um, in various towns and cities then throughout um, Northern Ireland. Well, Mr Chris Little. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I uh, welcome the new minister to her post as well and uh, commend her department for the support it has given to Sustrans Belfast Bike Life report, uh, which has found nearly £12 million in health benefits to Belfast and 67p per mile saving to citizens of Belfast uh, through cycling. It also uh, says that 78% of people in Belfast want to see more investment in cycling. So can I ask the Minister whether she intends to increase the budget for cycling in order to deliver the improved bicycle infrastructure that we need and deserve? Um, I thank the, the, the member for his question. And, um, I, I, as, the, as the member is aware, I launched the, the first bike, Belfast Bike Life report on the 21st of October, uh, and the member was present for that. Um, this report was compiled by Sustran and is based on the Copenhagen Bicycle Account. It's the first ever um, bicycle report for Belfast and provides information on cycling conditions in the city and the views of, um, of residents in Belfast on various aspects of cycling. Um, the report indicates, as the member has said, the number of journeys, 19,000 journeys, are actually made um, by bicycle every day in Belfast. And this information is critical in informing decision making within my department and also for um, policy development. Um, certainly, there has been an increase in um, the investment in cycling in recent years. Um, the member, as everyone in the, in the chamber is aware, there is um, a, a child, there are challenges regarding our, our financial situation, um, but certainly where there are opportunities, as I'd indicated in the response to um, Mr. Mackay in relation to Eurovalo and the development of Greenways, um, certainly take that, that under consideration. Mr. Roy Beggs. Question number five. <clears throat> The A8 scheme represents a 133 million investment by the Northern Ireland Executive. It forms part of the Eastern Seaboard Key Transport Corridor, which is an important link between Northern Ireland, the Irish Republic and Scotland via the Port of Lorne. I'm pleased to advise that the new A8 dual carriageway opened to traffic as programmed on the 29th of May 2015. However, since then, as the member will be aware, um, localised traffic management along the scheme has been required to facilitate ancillary works on side roads, utility works and the completion of the landscaping works during um, the planting season. Construction of this 8.7 miles long dual carriageway scheme commenced in August 2012 and is on target for contract completion at the end of December 2015. Throughout the construction works, Transport NI and the contractor have ensured that any inconvenience to the public has been minimised. This is an excellent scheme uh, which will improve journey times for the stretch of the A8 by removing the issues associated with the queuing of traffic, thus redu reducing uh, driver frustration and improving the safety performance of the route for all road users. In doing so, this much needed upgrade um, will help grow the local economy and contribute to wider economic development across Northern Ireland and will also help with the development of the Port of Lorne. Mr Beggs for supplementary. Over the course of the past uh, couple of months, uh, the road has been regularly coned off to enable replaning and resurfacing to meet road service standards. Can the Minister advise when that is coming to an end and when the uh, subsequently, 
the maintenance of the road, the, the lights, and indeed winter gritting will be added to the already burden that uh, rests on her department. Uh, is she satisfied that there is uh, an adequate budget within her department to look after the repair of street lighting, uh, maintenance of the road, uh, and, and indeed uh, winter gritting services? Okay, I thank the, the, the member for his numerous questions, um, a number of which will be covered in detail as we, as we move through question time. Um, as, as the member will be aware that um, a, a normal winter gridding service will be in place uh, and uh, obviously the roads will be, those roads will be included in that um, if they haven't already been, um, given um, the, the nature of the road. Um, everything we hope to be completed by the end of December. Um, there were obviously issues um, um, during the process of this construction in relation to um, unsuitable material which was identified uh, and that has been rectified. Um, I, I also know that the member had um, an issue in relation to, to grass cutting um, in this area. Um, that was commenced yesterday um, along the centre sec section of the A8 Central Reservation. Um, the, there are going to be lane closures associated with that and they're going to be required to cut the remaining outer strips of the central reservation and this is programmed to be completed by November 2015. Well, Mr. David Hilditch. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her, her answers so far. Uh, the infrastructure in East Antrim, including A8, is an example of how de devolution can work. And, uh, a great example uh, that AA gives us. Can the Minister give us some indication of the economic benefits to the area, including the journey times? Yes, um, the, the traffic model um, suggests that on average journey times along the section of the A8 between Coleman's Corner, Roundabout and Bally Rickard Road will reduce by approximately 25% as a result of the scheme. This equates to a journey time saving of between 2 minutes 24 seconds and 4 minutes 56 seconds, which seems terribly precise, um, but that is depending upon the direction of travel and also the time of the journey. Well, Mr. Kakaloshi. But, uh, I uh, welcome the Minister to uh, her first question to the question time. There are many of my constituents who will go green aid envy on the A8, but I wonder can the Minister uh, give us a final costings uh, for the A8 upgrade and whether or not that is above or below uh, the budget? Um, at this stage, the approved scheme estimate for the works was approximately £133 million. Um, as the contract for the work is, is currently ongoing, the outturn cost hasn't yet been finalised, so I'm not in a position actually to give the, the member um, the figure at this stage. Well, Mr Pat Brown. Uh, Deputy Principal Speaker, could I congratulate the Minister and wish her well on a, on a new appointment? Michelle. You made reference during one of the, the answers to inferior materials being used on the road. Can you assure the House that this has no additional costings to the public purse? Um, I, ca I can actually, because this was actually um, in conjunction with the contractor. Um, immediate action was, was taken to, to address this, and the contractor uh, replaced the affected surfacing to, sure that it, to ensure that it actually met with the standards um, that my department require, and there was no additional cost um, to that. Well, Mr. Danny Kennedy. Question number six, and Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, the member will of course know that the winter service programme is provided to mitigate against the effects of adverse weather. It does not eliminate them. My department will be providing a normal winter service with over 300 staff and a fleet of 130 gridders available every day to salt the main road network. Salt barns have been filled to a maximum capacity of over 70,000 tonnes with reserve stocks of around 20,000 tonnes in place. Salt bins and grit piles will be provided at strategic locations for self-help purposes. To further improve resilience, I have approved the purchase of four more snow blowers to supplement the department's current eight blowers. Snow clearance contracts are in place to enable contractors and farmers to be mobilised to clear roads during periods of prolonged snow. In addition to the preparations for adverse road conditions, Northern Ireland Water maintains a major incident plan 
to provide a fully planned reactive response to any major weather-induced incidents. TransLink also has severe weather management plans in place to cope with the effect of severe winter weather on public transport services. I fully recognise the importance of winter service to the people and the economy of Northern Ireland. Um, I have recently visited um, winter service depots at Ballykeel in Ballymena and Airport Road Belfast uh, to meet staff and to see at first hand the vital um, work that they do and actually just to realise just how passionate they actually are um, in, in, in caring for all of us um, at a time of, um, of severe weather. Um, they do take on a responsibility and I think we should be mindful of the fact that they actually go out when there is, um, when it's frosty, those roads that they are on are ungridded and I think we should um, actually give them a lot of praise for the work which, which they do. Kennedy for supplementary. Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, can I thank the Minister uh, for her answer and can I also take this opportunity uh, to, uh, to wish her well uh, in her new role? Uh, can the Minister confirm that she has the necessary resources, financial resources, to properly and fully fund winter services? Uh, can I thank uh, Mr. Candy for his good wishes um, as, I, as I move forward in this role, um, and, I, and I do appreciate that. Um, yes, I can confirm that um, there is adequate funding for to um, maintain a normal winter service. Well, Mr. Trevor Clark. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and can I, like others, um, welcome the Minister to our first question time. Just, just following on from the initial question there. What plans has the Minister um, and preparation plans in relation to the 2011, or sorry, to, pre to prevent an incident like the freeze thaw event in 2011? And has the Minister anything prepared to prevent the likes of that happening again? Um, I thank the, the member for, for his, um, his answer or his questions. Sorry, and in relation to that, it's particularly around um, Northern Ireland water. Um, and I, I remember this particularly well. At that, at that stage, I was, I was Deputy Chair of the, of the Regional Development Committee. Um, but one of the key recommendations coming out of that in the Northern Ireland Authority of, for Utility Regulation Report into the freeze thaw of that year was for Northern Ireland water to undertake a major public awareness campaign and that was in an effort to reduce the extent of water wastage on the customer side. Um, Northern Ireland Water is currently embarking on the fifth year of its winter advertising campaign, which will include television, radio, press, outdoor and online advertising. Uh, the theme of the campaign will retain the well-established Beat the Freeze message. In fact, a number of members in this chamber, including members of the committee, um, took the opportunity to get involved in, in, the, in some photographs in preparation for the launch of the campaign last week. Um, Northern Ireland Water in, intends to use um, media interviews to advise customers on the prevention of frozen pipes and wastage caused by burst pipes, uh, including a video on precautionary measures. Northern Ireland Water also maintains a major incident plan to provide a fully planned reactive response to any incidents that may impact on customers, the environment or business. The plan has been regularly tested during the year and has been exercised in response to real life emergency situations, including the multi-agency response to industrial action events of December and January 2015. So I hope that, that answers the members' questions, but it is very much around um, raising awareness uh, and, and also making sure that everyone realises that they have a responsibility um, to look after their own properties as well. As well. Oh, Ms. Karen McEva. Mr. Deputy Speaker, can I wish uh, the Minister uh, every success uh, in her new role? Um, just moving on uh, from that, I would like to ask the Minister, um, given that RPA has just happened and we have new councils, is the Minister confident that the new councils have signed up uh, to play their part uh, in the clearing up of any snow of ice? And that I would like her to include in her answer maybe uh, to do with our footpaths uh, in our towns and cities to keep our businesses open. Okay. Thank the, um, the member for her question. Uh, my department has to obviously prioritise its resources and our key um, priority is to salt main traffic routes just to keep traffic moving freely. Um, at the end of the 2014-15 winter season, um, Transport NI had arrangements with 25 out of the 26 councils to um, provide salt to allow councils where their resources permitted as well to salt busy towns, uh, centre footways in time 
um, of prolonged ice and snow to keep the local economy moving. Um, at this stage, Transport NI is currently in discussions um, to roll the, these arrangements over with the new council, um, but it isn't anticipated that there should be any issues in relation to that. Um, so, and I hope that, that answers the member's question. That concludes the period for listed questions. We now move to topical questions. I call Ms. Claire Sugden. Uh, thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and I congratulate the Minister on her new role and also pay due regard to Mr. Kennedy. Um, I uh, worked with the Minister's predecessor on a, on, towards a solution for a significant and dangerous traffic problem in Castle Rock Road, Corain. Um, would the Minister provide me with an update? Okay, um, I thank, thank the member um, for a question. Um, yeah, I am aware of the, of the issue at Castle um, Rock Road um, and of obviously the nature of that in relation to um, school traffic and the movements in and around that area. Um, I understand that there have been a, a number of um, uh, various um, measures that have been put in place in order to try to um, reduce um, risk there. There's a, a, a microprocessor optimized vehicle um, actuation system was introduced in, in May 2013. Um, a puffin um, controlled pedestrian crossing was also installed and we've also looked to improve cycling pedestrian facilities along the Castle, Castle Rock Road. Um, so there, there are a number of competing, competing demands in that area um, and obviously it, it has become an issue uh, and we're looking to see that those um, to monitor how those are, are progressing as a solution. So again for a supplementary. I thank the Minister for her response and further to the measures she's outlined, I do feel the problem is significant to warrant, uh, to warrant more measures in that area. Um, will the minister, uh, minister commit to working with the Minister for Education in, in a way of uh, providing a solution to this problem? I thank the, the member for, for her, her supplementary question. Um, I am I'm happy to do that and I'm also um, happy to, to discuss this further with the member um, uh, and if it, if it helps to actually visit the site just to see what, what the issues are um, and help to bring that to a resolution. Mr Dominic Bradley. Question number two please. It's a topical question, Mr. Bradley. Excuse me, sorry. Yeah, um, could I ask the minister, um, is she satisfied that the £14 million invested in the new railway station in Newry has been fully expo exploited by the rail company? Um, I I thank the, the, the member for his, his question, but it might be useful for him actually to give me some more information as to, to where he feels there may be some failings in relation to that, and obviously his own perspective coming from the constituency. Um, so if the member would like to, to, to enlighten me further. Well, well yes, um, I, I certainly, Mr Deputy Speaker, will enlighten the minister. After the recent review of services, um, there are now only 12 trains leaving Newry for Belfast, compared to 46 going uh, on a daily basis from Portadown to Belfast, 38 from Lurgan to Belfast. There's a 30-minute service from Portadown to Belfast, yet the Newry service has intervals of up to one and a half hours. So I hope the Minister sees that there is an imbalance there, and I would ask her, will she review this situation with a view to uh, increasing services from Newry to Belfast. I thank, thank the, the member for that additional information. Um, my understanding is that um, the current number is using um, trains from Newry, Points Pass and Scarva um, um, probably don't uh, justify additional services, particularly in, in the uh, early morning services. Um, I will ask officials to, to look again at the timetable in, in URI to see whether or not there is a possibility to, to maximise um, further usage out of the station. Um, you will understand that um, the revised timetables came about as a, re as a reduction in, um, in budget to the department um, and, and therefore to, to TransLink. Um, so this is all part of, of a, an additional re a, a review that's been carried out. I'm happy to take this back and to look at it again. Mr. Phil Flanning. For your last control, I must say it's good to see the Minister here and not in the castle. I'm sure she enjoys our company more than that of her executive colleagues. Uh, Minister, 16 people lost their lives on Fermanagh's roads in the last two years, making it the policing area 
with the, the highest death toll from collisions. And there were six facilities on the A4 from Enniskill to Five Mile Town and three on the A47 between Cash and Bleak. Does the Minister accept the need for enhanced road safety measures in Fermanagh? And what specifically does her department intend to do to make uh, roads more safe in Fermanagh? Uh, thank thank the, the, the member for his question. And um, how could I resist not coming to the Assembly Chamber to give my first question time? It was really the only thing I wanted to do today. Um, obviously, the death on, on, on on the roads in Fermanagh, or indeed any road in Northern Ireland, is certainly a tragedy. Um, my department worked closely with the PSNI and other agencies to assess um, any safety measures which are required on specific roads, uh, and obviously take account of all the recommendations which are, are made by, by, by the police and take action where necessary. Uh, again, as, I, as I've made clear to other members in the chamber, if there are particular roads which are which are of a particular which are of an issue which re, which you believe um, require um, specific attention, I, I'm happy to meet um, with the member to discuss those. Mr. Flanagan, for a supplementary. I thank the, the minister for her answer and her uh, open-mindedness on this issue. Uh, on, on a more general point, um, does the minister? Um, accept uh, the key role that cat's eyes play on our roads, particularly in dark weather uh, at times of, of heavy rain, uh, to show motorists where the roads go and where there are dangerous corners. Because if you travel around uh, the south of Ireland, the cat's eyes are, are much brighter and I think they're at a higher standard, whereas in the north it's much harder to see them. Do, does the Minister uh, accept that and will she commit the, pr the prioritisation of funding for cat's eyes in future budgets? Um, thank, thank the member for for a supplementary. Um, and cat size are recognised as um, a safety device used in road marking, and as the members highlighted, are particularly effective in wet weather and and also in in the fog when the effectiveness of road markings themselves are particularly reduced. Um, obviously, the requirement um, for cat size to be insult, installed on a road will be um, assessed by the local section office. But um, as I've said, I mean, road safety is a priority, um, and any, anything which will mitigate against the loss of life should um, be included and should be seen as a priority within my budget. Well, Mr. Michael McGimsey. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker, and can I too welcome the Minister to her first question time. Can I ask her that, in view of the fact that uh, in, in built up areas, planning permissions no longer carry with them parking requirements? Uh, does she agree with me that the best way to protect local communities in areas such as South Belfast, who are polluted by on-street car parking, that residents' parking schemes are the best way forward? Thank the, the member for, for his question, um, and, and certainly regardless of whether it's in Belfast city centre or even in some, some market towns around the province, um, parking, um, particularly in, in residence areas, um, can prove to be um, a problem. Um, I, do, um, I do, and I'm aware of the fact that um, my officials were, have been involved in advertising and the consultation process for a parking scheme in South Belfast and I do understand that there were a number of objections to that um, and they are currently be being worked through. Um, call Mr McGimsey for a supplementary. Thank you uh, Mr Deputy Speaker and can I thank the Minister for her answer and can she assure me that in respect of the various proposals for residence parking schemes that she will effectively keep the pressure on her department till we get to a resolution to give these communities uh, a much needed breathing space. Thank you. Um, thank the, the, the member for his, um, his supplementary question. Um, I understand that uh, he recently um, had a meeting with, the, with my predecessor in relation to this in the Donegal Pass um, area. Um, I'm happy to um, pursue this um, and to seek a resolution for the issues which, are, which have been highlighted. Mr. Raymond McCartney is not in his place. I call Mr. Gordon Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, and I too welcome the Minister and assure the question is not about bikes. Can we ask, does the Minister recognise the need by Transport and NI to do something to uh, reduce the, tra the daily traffic congestion for commuters from North Down travelling from Hollywood along the Sydenham Bypass? which we have approximately 40,000 vehicles per day. Uh, thank the, the member for his, his question, and, and perhaps um, those who cycle to work might um, suggest that that is as an alternative. Um, but Transport NI is aware of traffic congestion experienced by commuters in the A2 between um, Hollywood and, and D Street Junction in Belfast. 
the A2 Sydenham bypass scheme proposal for this route is to widen the existing dual two lane carriageway to a dual three lane carriageway. Mr. Dunn for supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister. Can the Minister give us some indication as to when this project may get underway in relation to widening the Sydney bypass and obviously dealing with the problem at the entrance to the Belfast City Airport as well? Okay, thank you, the, the, the member, for his question. And, and obviously, I, I'm conscious of the bottleneck um, that there is in that particular area. The scheme proposal is now in the third stage of a three-stage um, development process. Stage one concluded in May 2008 with the selection of the proposed corridor. Stage two concluded in February 2010 with the selection of the scheme um, preferred option. And stage three, which is currently underway, involves detailed assessment of the preferred option and ongoing consultation with key stakeholders. This will result in the publication of the statutory orders, the draft direction order, environmental statement and notice of intention to make a vesting order. This funding um, will go, uh, sorry, this, this, the current budget um, allows this development work to continue. However, progression of the scheme to publication of the statutory orders uh, will be subject to future year's funding. And uh, would the Minister uh, give us an update in relation to Narrow Water Bridge? She will be aware that this is a very important project and the people of Louth and Down are very interested in seeing it built. Uh, thank uh, the member for a question. I, I am aware of the, the Narrow Water Bridge project, which was proposed and sponsored um, primarily as, as a tourism project um, within Interreg 4. Um, my department has very limited interaction um, and had very limited interaction with the original project, other um, than those matters relating to bridge orders and um, to licensing. I'm, I'm unaware of any specific intentions in respect to bringing this project back to life, although I have heard um, speculation uh, at news reports, but as yet I haven't had any um, firm update. Ms. Ryan for a supplementary. I'd like to thank the Minister for, for her answer, and I am aware of the, the bridge order, both the north and south, and the, the planning. Um, but will, in light of the fact that it is such an important project, and it is tourism, but also economic, um, will the Minister do everything she can, including meeting the Taoiseach, where appropriate, in relation to this project? Um, again, thank the, the, the member for her question, and I'm, I'm happy to, to look at, at this as a project, but again, emphasising that it is a, a tourism-led project as opposed to something which is maybe of strategic importance um, for my department, but happy to look at it. Well, Mr Andy Allen. Well, Deputy Speaker, can the Minister advise if her department holds any information in relation to the number of footpaths throughout Northern Ireland at the start and end of those footpaths, which do not have lower curbs? Uh, I thank, thank the member for his question. I don't actually have that information here uh, and at hand, but I'm happy to, to give that information to the member um, by way of a written answer. for supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Principal. I swear. Uh, can I ask the Minister, is that uh, information ready available? And if it's not available, can research be carried out? Because um, I'm sure she can understand I myself have a major problem, and I've had a number of constituents approach me who have major difficulties when trying to mount and dismount footpaths um, to, to get to another footpath. Um, thank, thank the member for, for a supplementary question, and I'm, I'm happy to get that information, um, and, I'll, and I'll ask officials to um, forward that to us if it's in a if it's in a format which is easily easy to to forward. Um, that I'm, I'm also aware, just from my, from being a constituency MLA, as, as we all are, um, the difficulties that there are um, for. Um, uh, people with a disability um, in, um, in being able to use footpaths and also um, mothers with prams and so on as well um, and I know that through my own office and others I'm sure have the same experience that we have have lobbied um, transport and I as a road service as it was in the past um, to, to make provision where necessary. That ends the period for topical questions to the Minister. I ask the members to take their ease while we change the top table.